Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to Common English Mistakes, Don't Just Learn, Improve. So today we're just going to look at some basic grammar mistakes uh, people make with modal verbs. We use modal verbs in so many different ways, so it's important to make sure you get the basics right. So anyway, the most important mistake is up here. I must to go to the bank later. So just pause the video, try to correct the sentence. And well done if you said, I must go to the bank later. And this is the most important thing to say about modal verbs. It doesn't matter what situation, uh, how you're using the modal verb, after the modal verb, Always, 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 100% of the time, we're going to use the infinitive. So we're not going to use modal plus two infinitive, like the example. Also not going to use verb ing and say, you should going to the doctor. You should go to the doctor. We're not going to use the third person and say, he can speaks Thai. He can speak Thai. And one more about the past, uh, but we're going to look at that in a little bit. Very, very important and probably the most common mistake people make with modals. Modal verb plus infinitive. Always. The next error is with negatives. It's less common, but people still make this mistake. So just pause the video. Try to correct this sentence. I don't can come to your party. And well done if you said, I can't come to your party. To make a negative sentence, we just use the modal with unt or not. So, for example, you should drink lots of water. You shouldn't smoke. I will try harder next time. I won't do that again. Just be careful, however, because sometimes the meaning isn't just the opposite with the negative and the meaning changes. For example, you say, John looks terrible, he must be sick, but he can't be well. Just be aware that the opposite is not always just the modal in the negative. And then the next one is kind of similar when we make questions. So just pause the video and try to correct this question. Do you can come to my party? And well done again if you said we don't use an auxiliary here, we just invert the subject and the modal. So, can you come to my party? Or when will the concert start? Use an inversion, don't use an auxiliary. So questions and negatives you probably know. Where it gets a little bit tricky is using modals in the past. Some modals have a past form. For example, I can drive a car. When I was a child, I could touch my toes. However, sometimes we have to move a modal verb into the past. For example, with should. So for example, again, you should drink lots of water, advice, but then I shouldn't went to bed so late last night. We don't say this. Again, doesn't matter what we're doing, the next word after a modal verb must be an infinitive. And when we want to move a more advanced structure back into the past, generally we always do it in the same way, using have and the past participle. And it's the same for modals. So here, I shouldn't have gone to bed so late last night. So that's for advice in the past, or really what we call hindsight, where you realize what the correct decision was in the past. Uh, we can also use it for possibility. For example, I could have gone to university, but I didn't. I had the possibility, the opportunity to go. You can use it for deduction. Where's Paul? I don't know. He might have missed the bus in the past. And again, it's the same for third conditional. Classic sentence, if it had been sunny at the weekend, 
we would have gone to the beach. Again, it's the same structure, modal in the past, modal have, past participle. Interestingly, uh, there's a written mistake that many native speakers are making these days. So this isn't really a spoken thing because it sounds the same, but a lot of people write this, I should have gone to bed late last night. So just make sure it's a have after the modal verb. If you do that, you're going to write better than a lot of native speakers. Anyway, explanation over. Um, as ever, guys, if you haven't done so already, I would hit that subscribe button. I think you should have done it earlier, but don't worry. Uh, but do do it so you won't miss any videos in the future. Let's practice and improve. A little bit different for you today. I've got a couple of situations where I want you to use the language. First, I lost my wallet. I want you to give me advice in the present and the past. Next, uh, you see smoke rising above a forest. I want you to say what it could be or what someone might have done. And last, um, again, I was doing something silly. Uh, my engine was making a weird noise last week and it broke down today. I want you to say what you would do now and what you would have done last week. And well done if you said something like, you should go to the police station and you should have been more careful in the past. Next one, uh, well done if you said something like, it could be a fire, could be a campfire. But yeah, someone might have thrown a cigarette to start the fire. And finally, uh, if my car's broken down now, maybe you say, I would go to the mechanic and I would have gone there earlier. Probably, because you're probably more sensible. And finally, today's question, if someone visits your city or country, what should they do? So write your answers in the comments, guys. Interested to hear recommendations about food, places, and anything else. So anyway, that's basically it for today. Um, really, really important to get the basics of modal verbs right. Modal verb plus infinitive. And if we want to put them into the past, it's a modal verb have plus V3 or past participle. If you do that, you're going to make far fewer mistakes with them. Other than that, I'll see you in another video in the next couple of days. So until next time, see ya.